Okay, um, I'm going to cover this at a very different angle, although I think some things I want to say towards the end does scoot back around to what's being discussed. Um, I really struggled with the brief because I was asked to show some images, not very many, that are um, kind of important, sort of been central to my work, and I think there's two problems over that. One is that uh, there's, sorry, there's, I should point this. There's two kind of books I'm going to refer to for shorthand to keep it short. Um, so I did a book called Image Critique and the Fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, so as the title suggests, there was a kind of you know, political image at the centre of that. It was about this idea of this notion of images of the Berlin Wall, which kind of go across all sorts of domains. Um, and then a more recent book called Image Studies, where I deliberately wanted to, to push on this idea that image studies are sort of about different image domains. So immediately when I'm asked, what image should I show, I'm, I'm kind of struggling because I think, well, I want to keep open the domains. Um, but I think also more sort of fundamentally, I'm, I'm really skeptical about the idea of a, of a kind of an image um, and you know, it's sort of this, this kind of singular entity. And I'll, I'll try to explain what I mean by that. I think it probably is coming through in what has been discussed already. Okay, so but to try and get around this problem of showing images, I, I decided to go back to the final image of my book called Image Critique, um, and which I took and you know I, I tried to kind of make this a fairly emblematic image of, of the book. Um, so one of the kind of riffs in the book is this idea of a kind of dual procedure of a critique of images. And also the use of images for critical purposes in this kind of combined process of time, um, which kind of drove me mad. But this image is of the topography of terrors exhibit or open air museum in Berlin, taken in around 2000. It's very, very different now, um, which I, I won't go into. But um, uh, this, if, you know, if you're not familiar, it's in the heart of Berlin. Obviously, Berlin is littered with, with very tangible kind of histories of its past, scars of its past in many different ways. And this is kind of one of them. It's on Prince Albertstrasse. Um, below ground, uh, so the bottom half of the image in a sense then, is the site of the former uh, HQ of Nazi secret police, the Gestapo. Um, these are kind of cells that were for interrogation and so forth. Um, and behind the Berlin Wall is, is a, there's a government building, um, and as you can see, there, there's, there's a strip of the Berlin Wall um, running along the street level. Um, now, this was run as a museum, so you can see at the bottom there, there's some kind of warnings and stuff, you know, images and uh, text and so forth. And this was run by volunteers and was nearly turned into car parks many, many times over the years. Um, but it was kept as a, as a monument to the, you know, it's called a topography of terrorism in the Nazi period. Um, but the organisers very deliberately didn't put in too much explanation to this site. So it's very, very easy for a visitor to turn up and think the Berlin Wall is connected to the Gestapo. So there's a, you know, a, a national together of, of history. But the, for the organisers, they wanted this to be for visitors to find the answers for themselves. Um, it's a place of documentation, not interpretations of one of their phrases. Um, so I, I, I was always, I kind of liked this image for various reasons, and I'll maybe come back to that. Um, in some ways, we've already had a reference to Ron Sierra, and uh, I'm always hesitant to mention him because he gets get mentioned too much. Um, on the one hand, I think this does illustrate uh, an account of what's here as in the landscape spectator. Uh, here he refers to um, Sophie Rustilbus, um, which is of West Bank. Um, and his argument is that by not photographing the obvious symbol of separation, uh, of the smaller robots and so forth, um, his line is, she perhaps affects a displacement of the exhaustive affect of indignation to a more discreet affect, um, an affect of indeterminate affect, curiosity, the desire.
desire to see close up. And so for me, that's, yes, there's similarities here about curiosity, asking the visitors to work this out for themselves and to get up close to it. Um, and this, this place literally provides you with multiple views. So I won't sympathy with, with Rancière's uh, argument, but I don't necessarily buy it. Um, I think in relation to something, to some extent this is about the way he talks about this image rather than necessarily the, the work, the artist's work. But I think he, he appears to kind of privilege this image. Um, and I think then what he does is he, he closes down what I call kind of wider ecology images. So in the sense it's not situated. Whereas what I particularly like about the topography of terrorism is this site that you have to enter into and then it becomes a democratic space in that you are having to uh, kind of work your way through this kind of image. And so, I mean, this is, you know, I, in fact, in, in, in my original writing, I, I wasn't working on CS. I wasn't looking at it at all. Um, but for me, the topography of terrorists against, not at least the way it also talks about the Soviet Union's kind of, um, it suggests to me a kind of more makerly approach, uh, and sort of is an ecology of images or a topography of critique. And this has led me to want to think about Susan Sontag's evocative phrase of an ecology of images, and I, I referred to them in that book. Uh, and, you know, she, she uses this in her, in her 1970s book on photography. So right at the end of the book, a beautiful line that uh, maybe if there's all this abundance of images, we're going to have to have an ecology of them. We're going to have to kind of decide about it, make some decisions about it. Now, she then later, just in that book she produced just before she died, uh, regarding the pain of others, she really kind of laid into her own idea. And said there isn't going to be this guardian this committee of guardians who are going to sit through these images. In a sense, I agree with it, but I also felt that I wanted to rescue the ecology of images right here. Um, and so, <laughs> this is not necessarily the best way to rescue it, but nonetheless, <laughs> I produced this for the Book Image Studies, where it's, it's a, you know, a touch point aimed at the students, and it's trying to find a way through this, this whole set of domain, dom domains of images. And, chapters cover painting a drawing, photography, but also scientific imaging, imaging information, and so forth. I don't necessarily want to go into this diagram in lots of detail, but uh, what I tried to do was to go into, not the image so much, but the ecology. And I played around with the idea of organism and environment, uh, where you have the system of organism, or the image, that sits in its community, and sits in a larger system logical system, in this case, image system. Um, and there are various kind of, you know, phrases there, from ecology, about abundance, that adaptation, distribution, succession. Uh, so there's a sense of past and future. Um, but for me, it was very much about trying to have connectivity so that there isn't this singular image, but that it immediately is placed into an ecology. Um, and these are just some work students, some credit students, where I, I wanted to get them to try and create some sort of apologies of images. And again, I'm not going to go into these in detail, but the, the point for me, I suppose, is that this was trying, I, I, I gave, for example, an x-ray, and I gave a tube map, but I left it there. I didn't, uh, I, I mean, I discussed ideas about apologies of images. But the whole idea for this, this kind of exercise, this kind of classroom exercise, is to allow image to be the driving force of research rather than to impose the narratives. In, uh, and, and for example, we post key, key search words that we might think this is not Google. But somehow let the image drive through. Uh, and certainly some art students have said to me how they always kind of, they, they, they struggle maybe with some of the writing of essays, and they always end up writing a biographical essay about an artist, and that's not what they want to do at all. And then I think they felt this from the freedom of it to take an artwork and let it live and move through. And it's going to go through this sort of process and then later go back to writing. It sort of has changed their point of their initiation process. Um, 
Okay. So one of the things I think in this idea about going to get away from the singularity of image and this sort of tyranny, that sort of tyranny, and, and in a way, Ancier's line about the indignation of the, oh, the image again, it's not working. And we've had images recently to do with Syria, and the image of a, the X-ray image of a bullet to the baby's head, uh, which made not a dint in, in, you know, in, the, in the news. And then later we've had those other images that were produced, which had a bit more coverage, but this, you know, we're, we're tired of this. Um, and I think there's a, my sense is that no, it, it's not that these images aren't shocking, it's that they're in an apology and um, we need to sort of see them in that way. Now, what I'm sort of leaning towards, I suppose, is a kind of theory of the image with a capital I, akin to the theory of text that we're kind of familiar with in kind of structures, writings, certainly in French writings. Um, and there's that, I'm thinking of um, Roland Barthes' essay from Work to Text, um, where at the, very, at the very end, I'll just give a quote from that, is the discourse of the text should itself be nothing other than text, research, textual activity, since the text is that social space which leaves no language safe outside, nor any subject of the enunciation in position as judge, master, analyst, confessor, decoder. The theory of the text can coincide only with the practice of writing. And I think for me this is, this, this is a similar idea, the practice of the image, or the making of the image and so forth. And that's not really some dramatic idea at all. We're in a space here where people are doing this all the time. Um, but I think, I mean, there's some ideas about, for example, complexity and intuition, uh, or the idea that the image seems incredibly simple and yet beguiling at the same time. I think often that has dominated our, our way of thinking about the image in the same way that we seem to have been able to, not to accept the idea of the text, the capital T. And what might it mean to think of the image with a capital I? Um, so that it's image rather than, I mean, I've always struggled it's in writing. Just, you can say a, a kind of writing, you can talk about writing in this, it's not so image in this. Or uh, to image something it immediately a certain connotations. But anyway, idea of the kind of theory of the image or of image. Um, I want to complicate what I'm saying now. I'm kind of slightly trying to destabilize myself by moving to this image to the space table. Um, and I, mean, I want to go further out than this to, to push it the kind of post human. Because in a way, what I'm saying, I can be a very kind of human, humanistic sort of account of the image. But um, this is just an image of, the, you know, we, we kind of know these things, that space, all the space debris out there, all the rubbish. Um, and I, I, I've got some, there's something about, apparently there's 10 to 100 billion paint chips somewhere out there in space, you know, floating around. But this is a NASA image that's tracking something like 16,000 objects. And there's, you know, lots of issues here about scale. Uh, again, there's uh, ideas here about complexity, um, uh, uh, ideas about the kind of macro and micro readings. Uh, we might get, for example, the taxonomic city map where you can somehow see all sorts of stories taking place in the streets, but at the same time you see the large structures and some of the complexity. Uh, and the micro of each of the dots referring to objects as small as 10, 10 centimetres. And then there's issues about how many bits of information we can understand, or something like 100 million bits of information. And certainly one of his suggestions is that it's not, it's also got the value of machines imaging other machines that's come through some extent in the previous two talks. Um, and his, uh, he had a line actually to say, as soon as machines start making images of other machines, then you might as well throw out the sun to art and around the bar. And I sat there thinking, ah, that's a problem. Um, but I, I, so on one hand, I, I kind of agree, I would agree with him in a sense. But I think it also suddenly brings those images crashing back down to earth to say, yeah, actually, they are completely, they, that is a completely conceptual project. It's 
in the map. They don't, they don't, you didn't need to see the ideas we have. Because those images actually only exist for us. And that suddenly brings them back home. The responsibility comes thundering back to us about what it is we're going to do with them and how we want to understand them. Um, and that sort of leads me to the final points there. We've had a series of kind of turns in philosophy. So, you know, Richard Horty's turns of kind of stemming from kind of medieval philosophy of things, as kind of metaphysics, of ideas, of epistemology, to a philosophy of language. Um, and, our, you know, that's led to uh, much more kind of recent philosophies of sort of um, the, the linguistic turn, and, say, Gaffigandas, is now outside of the text and so forth. Um, and then more recently, the idea of a visual term, uh, which was right about the pictorial term and so forth. I think there's also a sense now very much, certainly in the period I've been writing about visual culture and trying to, I was trying to deal with that idea. What we seem to be hitting on now is that, as, I don't know what to call it, but let's say a data term, computational term, or, or however we want to talk about it. Which I think is, I think is potentially another term. Um, and so, um, you know, I think the image is different to data, potentially. Um, I think in the pictorial term, image, the idea of picture or image is, that, you know, they very often do not do what we say they do. That's not the only one way. And so, for example, my problem with Rancière, when he's writing about the Stilbers, um, which is, I don't think they quite do what he says they do. He says it very well, but in the end, I think they do something else, don't you? And that seems to me, that's where the pictorial term is very interesting. And I think mentioning about Paglin's work, the image, um, sending it out of space, kind of, collapses that image and or brings it back home. Um, and for me, brings back that question of the need to think about the image not as singularity, but as a mode in which we're in, a series of network of meanings in the same way, an ecology of images, in the same way that I think we think we, we certainly got our head around the of the text. Um, but then also, in this sort of potential data term, is the image important? Um, images, we've worried about them as representations. We've worried about them as, or celebrated them as presentations. Uh, we, I think we are starting to see them as communication and information. And at that point, it's where I'm wondering if we move into a, a new term. Um, and if so, we're already in the year of what the last pictures. Didn't need Pagan to send them up on the side of a satellite that's going to last billions, <coughs> billions of years. That the objects are already in the year of the last pictures. Um, or perhaps a theory of image is very much more active than we think. Or, of course, you know, again, referring to a space like this, of course it's active. And, um, that, and that, you know, again, prompts the need to break down into distant memory boundaries um, because we are more complicated than the way different knowledges are going to think about it, but for some reason, we to wait a lot of time to be So, yeah, I think I'll sort of end it on there. We could be at the era of the last pictures already. Are we the to turn, or are we um, 